Production of Broad and High is funded in part by the Greater Columbus Arts Council, celebrating expression, fostering talent, and connecting the community to Columbus artists, performances, exhibitions, concerts, public art, and more at columbusmakesart.com. From these contributing sponsors and viewers like you, thank you. This time on Broad and High, we talk with a couple who sends a piece of themselves with every creation. Learn how to make Bruce Garfield's famous herb encrusted salmon. And Broad and High presents singer songwriter Jesse Henry. This and more right now on Broad and High. Welcome to Broad and High. I'm your host, Kate Quickle. Sandra Lang and Walter Weil met in art school. They had a goal and worked towards making a living doing art. Lang Weil Studio is the realization of that dream. Their pottery ranges from fanciful mugs to decorative clay vessels. We met with them in their Groveport studio to talk about how they bring art to life. People don't see exactly what you're seeing unless you go ahead and carry it through and that's what your job is as an artist is to to bring that what you're seeing make it possible for other people to see it we met in art school um, CCAD started out in painting and drawing, but found clay, so I moved into that. And actually, it's been this gradual sort of getting to where we are. It was just, a, I guess, a natural evolution, but with always that being a goal of making our living as artisans. I went to learn to paint and draw. I met Sandy and kind of hung out with her in the clay studio. I was just sitting there talking. She was working. <laughs> I should have been home doing homework or something. When we decided to do this as a business, you know, it was hard, it was a struggle. So you just make little tweaks constantly to see what, what's going to sell, what's going to keep us alive. I never thought I would be doing functional ceramics when I was in school, but it's a good living. So many people say they don't see how you can work with uh, your spouse, and we've never had any problem working together. I think we both grew up with that really deeply ingrained blue-collar kind of values of work. I can't imagine not working. I do love physical labor. That's part of that whole experience of the 3D visceral living, and I think that, you know, for for us, we're not afraid of sweat, and we're not afraid of getting in it, in the dirt, and you know, exhausting hard work. Raku is a, a traditional firing from Japan, which actually came from Korea. They usually take the pot out, red hot, and let it cool naturally or quench it. They brought Raku back from Japan and were playing with it and they were carrying a pot, they were carrying pots down to a creek and somebody dropped one of them and they said, oh, just leave it and they kept going and then when they came back to it, it had smoldered in the leaves and, and the dry stuff and got some lusters and some cool things and so that's where the post-fire reduction came in. So it's pretty new to ceramics. With the raku, it's the temperature of the day, the humidity, the length of time it's in the can, how hot the kiln fired to, and how long it takes to get from the, the kiln to the can. Just every little thing can change, and it's just so unpredictable. That, you know, it's kind of cool that way. You have to let things go. 
you know, you can't be, it can't be perfect. It might be, but you can't expect it to be. And you can never recreate the same thing twice. And this is just what fits into our space and what we have. The way we chose to live is the reason that we can do what we do. So it's so completely entwined. It's a way of living. You do what it takes to, it kind of just kind of fits together. You know, we're not big consumers. We're more likely to buy a piece of art probably than we are to go out and buy the latest and newest stuff. And so we really consider that kind of thing. And there again, the, the idea of pottery going into your life, it's meant to last you, your life. It's not, not a throwaway thing. We make the clay and all the glazes. It's from scratch as you can get it. Our technique is, is slip trail, which is our clay dissolved to a liquid, put into a bottle with a needle tip, and then drawn onto the surface of the clay. So that gives it some texture, and it also holds the glaze where you put it. It's technical for us for certain reasons, um, but it also gives the user something to just hold on to, to caress, to, to feel. Um, and it's, it's usually something either pretty or funny. I think that sets it apart a little bit. And when we put handles on, on mugs, we try to make it a comfortable handle. And since they're all handmade, they're all gonna be different. People come into a booth and just pick up mug after mug, go, oh, this is the one, it feels just right. Maybe it might inspire them, maybe it'll just be something that comforts them, something, yeah, just fun. It's just such a joy to be able to pick something up and hold it and use it and appreciate it. You know, we have, people will come in to a booth and say, oh, well, you know, I would buy this, but my, my mother's a potter. And it's like, well, we have cupboards full of everybody else's pots. And it's just so nice to have a different pot every, every morning to drink coffee out of. Everyone feels different and it gives you a different feeling, different joy. I feel like the hand of the person that made it makes it an individual piece, that a piece of them kind of goes with it or you know, a bit of their energy, their spirit. Art for life is how we think about it. To see more of their work, check them out at langwilestudiopottery.com. In our next segment, we head back to the kitchen for another Kate's Quick Bites. This time, I talk with the director of a local organization whose mission is to contribute to Columbus's cultural and economic growth. And we'll be creating a culinary treat. Joining me in the kitchen today is Bruce Garfield, the Executive Director of Music Columbus. Bruce, thanks for being here. Well, thanks for having me. Of course. Why don't you tell us a little bit about Music Columbus? Music Columbus was founded in 2016 by Tom Krauss, who's the CEO of Donato's. So it's kind of appropriate that we're here in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. He founded it along with musicians, civic leaders, educators, and people that really had a passion for music. And the mission was to help lift up the careers of Columbus musicians and develop Columbus as a music city. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. It's a great mission. I'm so excited to learn more about and it. I'm enjoying myself doing this. I bet. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about the recipe you've chosen and the origins behind it? My best friend and my attorney, Alan Jacoby, lives in Miami. So about 15 or 20 years ago, I was taken out to dinner by he and his wife to a Cuban restaurant. And they ordered a whole sea bass, but when it arrived, it was encased in a cast of salt. Ooh. The little mallet. 
And I figured, well, you know, I don't really want to deal with trying to create this casted um, sea bass. So I decided to apply herbs to it. Ah. And I, that's how I came up with Garfield's famous herb encrusted salmon. And here we are. We're about to yes, make yes. it. Oh, my goodness. Well, I'm excited to get started. What will we need for the recipe? So the ingredients we need today will be a one and three quarter pound to two pound Atlantic salmon fillet, olive oil, lemon juice, one tablespoon of black sesame seeds, one tablespoon of rosemary, a tablespoon of tarragon, a tablespoon of cilantro, one tablespoon of thyme, one tablespoon of oregano, a half a tablespoon of Himalayan pink salt, and of course a tablespoon of coarse brown pepper. All right, great. These ingredients sound amazing. Are there any tips or pointers to make this dish a success? Absolutely. It's very important when you buy your salmon fillet to have it cut from the gill back. Okay. Because if you take the whole fillet, the tail is always so thin that the, it will never cook consistently. That makes sense. That's a really good tip. Yes. Okay, great. Well, before we get started on our recipe, why don't you tell me a little bit more about some of your programs? Oh, my goodness. So we have, I'd like to call it the pathway to prosperity, which we've constructed over the last four years. We have a Earn As You Learn program, where young people who are interested in a career in music get to be mentored at recording studios, radio stations, venues, equipment supply, and paid $15 an hour oh. over the summer. Mm -hmm. And that's been a very successful program. We just finished our third tranche of young people. Many of them have gone on to get full-time jobs. Mm -hmm. The rest have gone back to school. That's wonderful. We also have a program called The Unheard, where we give young emerging musicians the opportunity to play on a professional stage and probably earn their first paycheck. Mm -hmm. We also have a live music trail map we've created, which has 45 fully music dedicated venues here in Columbus. And it's gamified, so when you check in, you get points for every visit. That's wonderful. Sounds like a good range of programs for oh folks. Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> That's great. Well, what do we need to do to get started here on our recipe? Well, first we need to take our salmon. Uh -huh. and we have to wash it and pat it dry, which we've done we've before done. that. Okay. And then we need to mix all of our ingredients. So these get tossed. So it's kind of like a rub? Is that sort of where exactly. this is headed? Okay. Exactly. It's so pretty, all the different colors. And the is pink it? and the pink Himalayan salt, was that what the sea bass was encrusted in or did, what, did it matter? No, this was my wife this Beth's was, oh, idea. Okay. She's like, because it's pretty. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. She, pink is one of her favorite colors. I love it. No Barbie reference. <laughs> this is going to be so beautiful and fragrant. And of course, we'll leave that sit there for a minute. Okay. And then I better take my watch and ring okay. off. Do that when you're at home because it's the messy part All coming right, up. I'll Let do me that just too. put it there. Right. Put them over here. Okay, so we drizzle the salmon with lemon juice. Okay. Sure, I'll be the seed collector. Okay, great. There we go. Get out of there, seeds. And then we apply virgin olive oil. Okay. Do you need to do it to both sides or are we just doing it? We'll get okay. there in a second. All right, I'm getting ahead of the, of the gang here. Okay. Okay, we'll do it to be your sous chef. Both sides. Okay. Should I mix this up or is that? Are yes, we please. Oh, great. This is you're really not, beautiful. You didn't think you were just going to get I away with standing here. I just want to stand here, here and wait till I get to try it. Oh, it's so fragrant already. And I always like to apply olive oil, whether I'm cooking meat or fish or poultry. Seed removal. Yeah, no, that's a great idea. Okay, and then you need to wash your yes. hands. We'll probably re have to rewash again yeah, after this right. part. Okay. Okay, now that we've washed our hands, Clean. we take this wonderful mixture mm -hmm. of herbs and we sprinkle it pretty evenly over the skin side. Okay. And we pat it down. Okay. So have it you can flip and I'll sprinkle. That way you can be fish hands and I'll be okay. herb hands. <laughs> Perfect. Oops. And of course, okay. the of course the meat side that we need to encrust it even more. Even more. So this whole herb mixture is going to go on here, right? Like go generous. Absolutely. Okay. Don't, Don't hold back. Don't need to be holding back. We want no. it. 
Covering. Let's get it all oh, out there. On there. Get it all. It's so beautiful. I like the way the herb colors contrast with the salmon. Okay, let's get that on. It looks good. It tastes good. And then we're going to... Smells gonna amazing. Pat it down. Okay, so you want it to really stick? Right. Put a little pressure on it. Okay. Because we do want that to stick. Doesn't that look great? It looks beautiful. Except I don't know about this. That's but uh, One more second for wash off. All right. Well, this looks beautiful. Before we go on to our next step, will you tell me a little bit about Gift of Music? Oh, my goodness. This is my favorite program of all our programs. We realize that, unfortunately, the first programs in schools to feel the edge of the budget acts are music and art. And with that said, I visited a public school back in 2019, and I saw that the music rooms were not equipped fully as I thought they should be. And I walked out that day and said, with misty eyes, mm -hmm. we need to start a music drive, and it's going to be called The Gift of Music. So this year marks our fifth annual. Oh, wonderful. And so far, we've collected way over 2,000 instruments and actually $327,000 of the equivalent of value. Wow. And we call upon our entire community whether it's organizations, individuals, to find that clarinet or that guitar that's been sitting at home collecting dust since Susie left the house 12 mm -hmm. years earlier, or Harry, get those darn drums out of the basement. So you're putting instruments into the hands of children and they're getting music into their lives. Oh my goodness, it helps with their socialization skills, their sense of self-esteem, hand-eye coordination, and it gives them a sense of accomplishment and also it feeds into the family mm -hmm. because parents get to see their children doing something you know that's you know that they practice at home and that you know it just enriches their lives absolutely that's incredible what a great program i love it because i was a recipient of an instrument when i was in middle school oh, really what do you play what was the instrument well i played trumpet but now i play the telephone <laughs> well said <laughs> Well, awesome. Well, I'm excited to find out what we're going to do next with this beautiful salmon. What's, what's our next Well, step? we're going to place it on our this? grill pan. Okay. And it's also very important, and I'll do it in my hands, to put the skin side up. Up. Because okay. to start. Uh-huh. Because I like a crunchy skin. Yeah. And you usually find out when you bake or broil salmon that there's not a full degree of consistency. So mm -hmm. actually what we're doing is... We're kind of cooking on both sides so it meets at the center and leaves us with a really mm. rare but you know, delicious center. Of course. Okay. Of course. So we've got it on this rack. So then it we'll put it a little more of our deliciousness. Uh, seed removal again. Right. Um, so the rack here gives it the airflow underneath so it doesn't get soggy. Exactly. It'll get crispy. And we put it in the oven on broil mm -hmm. on the next to the top shelf and we watch. Kind of is there, when the skin starts to get nearly bubbling mm -hmm. or brown, time to flip it you over. Flip them, okay. We do about a total of nine to 10 minutes in the, uh, in the oven. Per side or total? Total. Okay, so it's not too long. No. Okay, great, should we pop it in the oven? Yes, let's go it. for it. I got it. Okay. Okay, so it's out of the oven. It smells incredible. It's beautiful. We've got it resting for a little bit, right? Just About a minute. Okay. Just to let the juices mm -hmm. circulate. Oh my goodness. All right, so you obviously have a passion for cooking. You have a passion for music. Do you think people realize how important it is to incorporate music into their lives? I don't think so because music sometimes is referred to in the industry as an invisible economy. If you wake up in the morning, you may turn the radio on, Watch TV, was there music in a commercial? Was there any music during the program? Did you go to a restaurant and hear music? There's music everywhere, including, of course, the venues you go to see artists in. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd like to say that there's music in all of us. I think that's beautiful. 
Thank you. I love it. I think we should give this a taste. Oh, absolutely. You Here go, go first. Okay, I'm going to go in. This I want you to gorgeous. be my taste. Oh, look at that perfect bite that just popped up. Yum. It's still actually Bruce, warm. Bruce, this is legendary. Mmm. Mmm. It's delicious. What do you call it? What's the full name of this? It's your... Garfield's Famous. No, you can just call it <laughs> Herb Encrusted Salmon. I'm calling it Garfield's Famous Herb Encrusted Salmon. Thank you. I appreciate that. Because it's incredible. That. And it wasn't that hard to make. No. Simple, quick, not a complicated recipe. Love it. Just Bruce, a little love and care. This is great. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Of course. Great. To learn more about Music Columbus, check out musiccolumbus.com. Musician Jesse Henry brought his musical talent to Columbus over 20 years ago. Since then, he has written, recorded, or produced over 15 albums and taught music to countless youth. We were lucky enough to host him in our studio recently for a Broad and High Presents recording session. Let's take a listen to this talented artist. Touches down on the town's black diamond Moving days dawning to light the world See the faces in the holler And the graves of the sons and their daughters Ancient places our fathers Saw the future in the water Now shake hands with heaven Amazed it all oh, that I see Where I come from there's no boundary Southeastern Ohio Oh, all who come before us Cut a deep path through the forest Where the white pines grow over coal mines In a long time, all turned to dust There's no rights here for the wicked There's no wrong way to be forgiven in the short life that we'll live on Shows the rights to survive In the times that we're given And I'll shake hands with heaven Amazed at all that I see Where I come from There's no boundaries Southeastern Ohio Is arising and the stars they are shining, hearing thunder, seeing lightning, and tomorrow looks frightening. There's a place to come home to where grace knows you with strength. Faith and truth Give the glory to the mother She's the only one who made you And I'll shake hands with heaven Amazed at all that I see Where I come from There's no boundaries Southeast of Ohio 
southeastern Ohio. To hear more, check out jessemhenry.com. Well, that's our show. Remember, you can find all of our stories online at wosu.org as well as on our YouTube channel. For all of us here at WOSU, I'm Kate Quickle. Thanks for watching. I am the future. You're the memory. We are the presence, the gifts for giving. I am the warrior. Production of Broad and High is funded in part by the Greater Columbus Arts Council, celebrating expression, fostering talent, and connecting the community to Columbus artists, performances, exhibitions, concerts, public art, and more at columbusmakesart.com.